Now we'll start. Terzak is bearing capacity theory. It's for solar foundations. Let us. draw a footing This is your width B, depth of the foundation DF, pressure intensity QU, this is phi, this is phi, this has been called zone 1, this is your zone 2, this is your zone 3 and this will be q is equal to gamma df and this angle this angle will be 45 degree minus 5 by 2 first one is called elastic zone which will be immediately below the foundation. Second is zone 2 is called radial shear zone or Prandelst radial shear zone and zone 3, zone 3 is your Rankine's passive zone. Rankine's passive zones. So, what are the assumptions? Assumption is your footing is long and strip soil is semi infinite homogeneous and isotropic soil semi infinite homogeneous isotropic soil fails by means of general shear failure load is vertical and concentric load vertical and concentric base of the footing base of footing it is rough and 
lay dot shallow depth and shear strength is governed by shear strength is governed by mohor coulomb equations there jack is bearing capacity theory how it has come it has come from a earlier from the mechanical uh, by electronic microscopic with a strip they observed that this kind of failure surface or particularly plastic sheets they observed. So, Terzaghi is the first person who has taken these observations and uh, taken a shallow foundation there, there is a footing here and it is zone 1, 2, 3 here also zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3 it is symmetry both the sides. So, he classified based on that observation from mechanical of a polythene sheets by means of electronic microscopic whatever the failure surface observed it has been implemented or taken for soil mechanics. Zone 1 is your elastic zone which will be immediately below the foundations. If I say this is my foundation, so this elastic zone will be immediately below your foundation. Second one is your radial shear zone, this is your radial shear zone. third one is your Rankine's passive zone and later on it has been modified the Rizagi's assumption is a footing is a long and strip. Soil is in all geotechnical engineering problems generally assumption is for soil it is semi infinite homogeneous and isotropic that means the properties are not changing. Soil fails by means of general shear failure that is his assumptions. And in this case load is vertical and concentric, base of the footing is rough laid at shallow depth, shear strength is governed by Mohr Coulomb equations. These are assumptions you can say that maybe these are the limitations of Terzaghi proposed bearing capacity. The exact solution it is a long one I will just keep uh, doing the free body diagram so that you can have an idea how this exact solution has been done, but it is out of the scope. Now, the derivation part is coming what we are going to get it from here we are going to get it a bearing capacity equations. Now, let me come back to two free body diagrams two free body diagrams. So, let me take it half of this whatever I have shown it earlier half of this from here this surface to this surface I am taking it back. So, how it looks? So, now I can name it or I can mark this forces this is your Q is equal to gamma d f this will be your 45 degree minus phi by 2 and this is also 45 degree minus phi by 2 and here this angle will be this will be your phi this will be your phi and there will be different terms one is your p p gamma other is your p p c and p p gamma if I put it here from here to here it will be h by 2 and here it is your h and then 
sorry it is not p p gamma it will be p p q then it is a p p gamma p p gamma this will be h by h by 3. Now, particularly if I write it p p if I write it p p p p is your passive force p p is your passive force on the face on the face then it will be p p q plus p p c plus p p gamma. If you look at the notations p p q passive force due to surcharge p p c passive force due to cohesion p p gamma passive force due to your unit weight. So, generally how he has solved it may be at the end slightly I can say it is out of this scope. So, it has been superimposed considering p p q other two part has been neglected considering p p c other two part has been neglected free body diagram has been drawn considering p p gamma also other two part has been neglected and free body diagram has been drawn then it has been superimposed then it has been superimposed. So, if I write in case of p p q so, p p q what is that part this is because of your surcharge surcharge then in that case c is equal to 0 gamma is equal to 0 then p p c by soil cohesion by soil cohesion in that case gamma is equal to 0 q is equal to 0 then p p gamma in that case by weight of soil in sewer zone. So, in that case q is equal to 0 these are the cases. So, if I am taking it to a middle part of this free body diagram if I make it in this bigger one let it be a b d let it be a b d. So, this will be your I am drawing the free body diagram this will be your q u and this is phi and this is your phi here is your c a here is your c a then I wrote it it is completely p p p p is your p p q p p c and p p gamma here i wrote it then this side also it is p p it makes an angle phi this is my free body diagram and width of the foundation is your b f I am taking the elastic zone part I am taking the old elastic zone part. So, a d and b d of the elastic zone are the failure planes rising at an angle to the horizontal a d and d b a d and b d of the elastic wedge are failure planes failure planes. So, if I take this free body diagram let me write it out downward force downward force that is your q u into b into 1 q u into b into 1 I am writing it only b width of the foundation only b. So, downward force q u load intensity b is your weight into 1. So, this is your load transmitted c 
So, then weight of the soil weighs gamma b square by 4 tan phi, this is your weight of wedge, this is your downward force, downward force and upward force total passive resistance of upward force is your total passive resistance. Then vertical component of cohesion C, vertical component of cohesion force, force C. If I write it Q B which is equal to 2 P plus 2 C sin phi, here I am writing plus gamma b square by 4 tan phi. Look at here once again downward force, this is the free body diagram of the elastic zone downward force Q u into b into 1, because it has been assumed it is a long it is a two dimensional problem and plane strain, if it is a plane strain per meter length q u into b per meter length is a 1, this is a vertical force acted downward. Then within this wedge, what is the weight of the wedge? Weight of the wedge is your gamma b square by 4 into tan phi, then look at the upward force total p p, it may be p p is p p q, p p c and p p gamma is that upward force and this C, C A or C has two component, one is your vertical component, one is your lateral component. So, lateral component will equal and opposite and it will cancel out. So, vertical component will add to your upward force. Now, here it is your 2 P P plus 2 C sin phi. Now, I can write it capital C is equal to small c unit cohesion into d a which is equal to c into d b capital C is equal to c a or c unit cohesion small c d a over the length this d a over the length this d b which is equal to again which is equal to c into b by 2 by cos phi c over the length here which will be b by 2 cos phi. So, if I am writing it here I am putting it q u, q u into b which is equal to 2 p p plus b c, b c tan phi minus gamma b square by 4 tan phi. As I said the p p has three component, it is your total passive. So, p p gamma, p p q and p p c. If I write it, so this will be again 2 p p q, q is your surcharge, p p c, this is your cohesion plus p p gamma unit weight plus b c tan phi minus gamma b square by 4 tan phi. Now, let writing in this way let 2 p p gamma minus gamma b square by 4 tan phi which is equal to b into half gamma b n gamma. Then 2 p p c, this is because of your unit weight, this is because of your cohesion plus b c tan phi which is equal to b c n c and 2 p p q 
which is equal to B Q N Q. Why it has been rearranged like this? We have to bring out in a dimensionless form N C, N Q and N gamma are called bearing capacity factors. And if you look at here, if I am saying P P gamma because of a unit weight, unit weight which part is coming? This is a weight of the wedge, I am taking it here, this minus this putting it B into half gamma B by 2 into N gamma. If I am talking about the unit cohesions, so this will be your 2 P P C unit cohesions plus B C tan phi around the periphery how your cohesion force this is your B C N C, N C is your bearing capacity factor considering cohesions. P P Q surcharge B Q or B Q U, B Q or B Q U N Q. If I am rewriting it, if I am rewriting it Q U is equal to all the terms if I am rewriting it, it will be C N C plus Q N Q plus 0 0.5 gamma B N gamma or C N C plus gamma D F N Q plus 0 0.5 gamma B N gamma. This is your Terzaghi's bearing capacity theory ultimate bearing capacity Q u is equal to C n c. Look at here definitions Q u is your ultimate bearing capacity C n c plus gamma d f n q plus 0 0.5 gamma b n gamma and n c n q n gamma these are all your bearing capacity factors bearing capacity factors it depends on phi. So, this is all total in details you have to take a free bird diagram individually then calculate it and n c n q n gamma are the bearing capacity factors. If I write it n c n q and n gamma after the detail solutions bearing capacity factor for cohesions it will be cot phi a square by 2 cos square pi by 4 plus phi by 2 minus 1 which is equal to you can write it n q minus 1 into cot phi n q is equal to bearing capacity factor for your surcharge a square by 2 cos square pi by 4 plus phi by 2 n gamma is equal to half tan phi k p gamma by cos square phi minus 1. So, this is after solving all free body diagram individually taking into consideration integrating n c n q and n gamma will come into in this form. So, basically it depends on your phi depends on your phi. So, a what is a? a is exponential 3 pi by 4 minus phi by 2 into tan phi k p r is equal to passive earth pressure coefficient. So, this is your bearing capacity factors and ultimate bearing capacity as per Terzaghi's bearing capacity theory you have to remember this, this will be required throughout your foundation design C n c gamma d f n q plus 0 0.5 gamma b n gamma or C n c q n q plus 0 0.5 gamma b n gamma. Once you know the phi value, 
you can find it out bearing capacity factors n c n q and n gamma when phi is equal to 0 phi is equal to 0 n c is equal to 5.7 n q is equal to 1 n gamma is equal to 0. So, Terzaghi has given a bearing capacity factor chart that you can keep it for examination point of view for different value of phi n c n q has been given. So, in between phi it has been given 0, 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, 50 degree like this given. In between you have to interpolate, you have to interpolate this value of your n c n q and n gamma. So, this is about your Terzaghi's bearing capacity, ultimate bearing capacity of your foundations resting on a soil to find it out considering a general shear failure. Later on Terzaghi has modified if there is a local shear failure, local shear failure if you go back to as I have said which cases it will be your local shear failure, phi is greater than equal to 36 degree general shear failure it has been assumed for sandy soils. Local shear failure if it is phi is less than equal to 28 degree then it is a local shear failure. So, in this case, in this case for local shear failure Terzaghi has given empirical relations for adjustment Terzaghi which has proposed 1943. So, you have to consider mobilize cohesion is equal to 2 third c tan phi m is equal to 2 third tan phi. Now, ultimate bearing capacity for your considering local shear failure q u is equal to 2 third c and c prime effective in terms of if it is a phi effective there will be a total stress as well as there will be effective stress plus q and q prime plus 0 0.5 gamma b n gamma prime. This is what he has given the modifications for this case local shear failures. So, now again he has modified for your square and circular footings will solve also problems in this case how it will going. First one Terzaghi has given for it considering it is a cohesionless soil considering C phi soils considering it is general shear failures Q u is equal to C n C plus Q n Q plus 0 0.5 gamma b n gamma. Then later in 1943 he has modified for your considering it is a local shear failure q u is equal to 2 third c n c prime q n q prime plus 0 0.5 gamma b n gamma prime. Now again he has modified because initially assumption it has been considered for a strip footing. Again it has been modified for square as well as circular footing. Now, for square footing, q u is equal to 1.3 c n c plus gamma d f n q plus 0 0.4 gamma b n gamma. And for circular footing, circular footing q u is equal to 1.3 c n c plus gamma d f n q plus 0 0.3 gamma b n gamma. Look at initial bearing capacity considering general shear failure for a strip foundations q u is equal to c n c plus 
गामा डी एफ एन क्यू प्लस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव गामा बी एन गामा दिस इज वाट इनिशियल ही हेज गिवेन फॉर ए स्ट्रीप फुटिंग कंसिडरिंग जेनरल शेयर फेल्यूर नाउ इट हैज बीन मॉडिफाइड फॉर योर कंसिडरिंग लोकल शेयर फेल्यूर एगेन इट हैज बीन मॉडिफाइड फॉर स्क्वेयर एज वेल एज सर्कुलर स्क्वेयर व्हाट आर द टर्म्स वन पॉइंट थ्री सी एन सी एंड जीरो पॉइंट फोर इंस्टेड ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट फाइव इट इज जीरो पॉइंट फोर हियर इट इज वन पॉइंट थ्री सी एन सी हियर इट इज जीरो पॉइंट थ्री दिस मॉडिफिकेशन बेस्ड ऑन द स्टडीज बेस्ड ऑन द सम फ्यू एक्सपेरिमेंट्स स्टडीज ही हैज बीन मॉडिफाइड देन आई थिंक आई स्टॉप इट हियर नेक्स्ट क्लास आई स्टार्ट द इफेक्ट ऑफ द वाटर टेबल After finishing this effect of water table, I'll solve few problems. I'll solve few problems. How to calculate your bearing capacity, ultimate bearing capacity? Before I go for other bearing capacity theories, basics and mayoffs, because these are all preliminary part, basic part. How to calculate your bearing capacity of foundations resting on soils? then once it is over we'll go for settlement analysis then once that is over then we'll go for different foundation designs thank you